In the last couple of years, there have been space companies that have shocked the entire industry with unthinkable achievements. Companies like SpaceX and Rocket Lab that have redefined what we thought was possible. And then, on the other side of the spectrum, there are companies that have fallen off so dramatically from their once glorious era that it almost seems unbelievable. The best example of this fall from grace is Boeing, and right alongside it is United Launch Alliance, or ULA. Both of these companies, once industry giants, have been making headlines but for all the wrong reasons. They seem to be bouncing from one problem to another, with no end in sight. The irony in this situation is that ULA is partially owned by Boeing, which raises some serious questions about whether Boeing's long-standing dominance in aerospace is coming to an end. Most recently, ULA conducted a highly significant launch with their next-generation Vulcan Centaur rocket as part of their certification process. This launch was critical for ULA, as it's supposed to certify Vulcan for future missions, including national security and commercial payloads, but to no one's surprise, things didn't go as planned. On this particular mission, which took place yesterday, ULA's Vulcan Centaur lifted off for its second certification flight. The goal of this mission was to test and prove the vehicle's capabilities, and it carried an inert payload instead of a real one. ULA opted for this setup because they weren't quite ready to risk a valuable payload just yet. However, around 40 seconds into the flight, things took a turn for the worse. One of the rocket's two solid rocket boosters experienced an anomaly, leading to an imbalance in thrust and forcing the flight to deviate from its expected path. This launch wasn't just any routine test. This was the second time Vulcan Centaur had ever flown, and the mission was part of ULA's critical certification process to prove the rocket's reliability for future missions. At the heart of the Vulcan Centaur are its two BE-4 engines, which were developed by Blue Origin, another major player in the space industry. These engines were supposed to give Vulcan a competitive edge, as they are methane-fueled and designed for reusability, much like SpaceX's rockets. At first, everything seemed to be progressing smoothly. The two BE-4 engines roared to life as expected, along with the two solid rocket boosters attached to the rocket's core, providing additional thrust for liftoff. These engines, designed by Blue Origin, were chosen for their innovative methane-fueled technology and potential efficiency, meant to compete with industry leaders like SpaceX's Raptor engines, which are used in the Starship rocket. As the Vulcan Centaur lifted off, it generated approximately 2.5 million pounds of thrust, a significant force aimed at making ULA competitive against rockets like SpaceX's Starship, which can produce up to 16 million pounds of thrust when fully powered by its super-heavy booster. By the 22nd mark, Mission Control confirmed that all systems were functioning as planned. Engine temperatures were stable, pressures were within expected ranges, and the BE-4 engines were performing perfectly. At this point, the rocket should have continued its ascent as planned, following a precise trajectory that would carry it toward orbit. In a flawless launch, the Vulcan Centaur's solid rocket boosters would provide essential lift for just over two minutes before being jettisoned. These solid rocket boosters are designed to burn quickly and then detach from the rocket once their fuel is spent. However, 38 seconds after liftoff, something went wrong. Video footage from the mission showed a stream of sparks coming from the base of one of the solid rocket boosters, indicating a problem. This was later confirmed to be an anomaly in the booster's engine nozzle, a crucial component responsible for directing the booster's thrust. Shortly after the sparks appeared, the camera angle changed, revealing that the thrust coming from the two solid rocket boosters was no longer symmetrical. One booster was not providing the same amount of thrust as the other, leading to an imbalance. This is a serious problem in rocket launches because the loss of symmetry in thrust can destabilize the vehicle. Rockets depend on balanced thrust for stability during flight, and when one side produces less thrust, the rocket could potentially veer off course. At 54 seconds into the flight, more sparks erupted from the same solid rocket booster, confirming that it wasn't performing as expected. Despite these clear issues, ULA's mission control made the decision to continue with the flight. The BE-4 engines were still functioning normally, and the mission moved forward. 
As the solid rocket booster anomaly unfolded, Mission Control had to adapt the flight profile in real time to compensate for the loss in thrust from one of the boosters. Had the launch gone as planned, by 1 minute and 27 seconds into the flight, Mission Control would have announced that the solid rocket boosters were approaching burnout and would soon be jettisoned. But due to the anomaly, the solid rocket boosters continued producing thrust beyond their expected burnout time, which caused a delay in the planned jettison of the boosters. It wasn't until 2 minutes and 10 seconds into the flight, well beyond the original schedule, that both solid rocket boosters finally jettisoned from the Vulcan Centaur. At this point, the BE-4 engines were the sole source of propulsion. However, the earlier anomaly had already disrupted the timeline of critical mission milestones. Originally, the plan was for the main booster engine cutoff to occur at 4 minutes and 59 seconds, allowing the upper stage to take over and carry the payload to its designated orbit. But because of the earlier disruption in thrust, the booster engine cutoff had to be delayed. It didn't happen until 5 minutes and 7 seconds. While the mission was somehow a success, ULA as a company faces much deeper challenges that go beyond just fixing the solid rocket booster anomaly. While the mission was partially success, ULA will need to investigate the solid rocket booster anomaly before moving forward with other Vulcan flights. The investigation could cause slight delays depending on how severe the issue is and what fixes are required. Looking ahead, Vulcan has several major missions planned. Dream Chaser is expected to fly on Vulcan sometime next year. Additionally, ULA has several U.S. government launches scheduled for late 2024, including missions in November and December. These future flights will use a configuration with four solid rocket boosters instead of two, potentially providing more thrust and stability. The main issue for ULA is its inability to lower costs in the same way that SpaceX has done. SpaceX's reusable rocket technology has slashed launch costs, offering services for a fraction of what ULA charges. For instance, ULA's legacy rockets, such as the Atlas V, are significantly more expensive to operate than SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Even though ULA has developed the Vulcan Centaur to address these concerns, the high development costs and technical delays have made it difficult for ULA to quickly catch up. Additionally, there have been growing speculations that ULA might be up for sale. According to industry sources, ULA's value is estimated to be in the range of $1 billion to $2 billion, depending on factors such as ongoing contracts. While this might seem like a strong valuation, it is relatively modest compared to the multi-billion dollar valuations of companies like SpaceX or Blue Origin, which have broader and more diverse portfolios. One of the more intriguing speculations is that Blue Origin, founded by Amazon's Jeff Bezos, might be interested in acquiring ULA. By acquiring ULA, Blue Origin could potentially gain access to ULA's government contracts, which include key military and national security missions, something that would be highly valuable to any space company looking to establish itself as a dominant player. If you've watched this far, it means you are one of our loyal viewers, and I've got something special just for you. We have highly realistic Starship models available on eBay, exclusively for our dedicated fans. Head to the link in the description and grab your own model. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.